Right, my name is Charles Fanger at JTEC, and I'm going to go over an AC system right here. We're going to go over some components and then uh, how the basic system works. So we're going to start with what you would see in your vehicle um, of the AC system, your AC control panel. So this will tell you how to function your AC. Um, so this is from an Audi, uh, 1998 Audi. It shows your recirculation, turn your AC on, your temperature, fan speed, all stuff. So this is how you control it. You kind of hear the fan kicking on. Um, but anyway, so that's what you see from your vehicle. Now what this does is it makes your whole system work. So from the inside, of, it'll work from the inside of the vehicle to the outside of the vehicle. This works in a circular system. Um, what actually cools your vehicle is the evaporator, which is this system right here. We have the vents, okay, and they come down into an evaporator port in the back. Of this system, it shows the evaporator. Now, if you look over here, it's right here. So you've got two tubes coming into an evaporator. Now, what the evaporator does is as air blows across it, um, it pulls heat from the, uh, from the air by boiling the refrigerant. So the refrigerant boils at a low temperature of 20, 30 degrees, whatever it's set at, uh, whichever the refrigerant you're using at. This is 134A, so I think the boiling temperature is at 28 degrees. Um, and it's really low for something for a refrigerant to boil. Now the interesting thing is that as it comes out of the evaporator, from which turn it on, comes out of the evaporator, it goes into the compressor. Now I'm not gonna turn it on right now because it makes a lot of noise. Uh, from the evaporator, goes through the compressor. And the compressor, all it does, is, all it is, is a pump. It just pushes, it pushes refrigerant through your lines. As it goes through the refrigerant, it goes from the compressor. It goes into your condenser. Now the condenser on this, or the radiator side of your vehicle, is right here. I don't know if you can see that in there, but there's a condenser right there. Now what this does is it takes the, uh, it cools off the refrigerant. So with all these pieces together, um, so if you come back up here to the evaporator, this is the inside of the evaporator. You can tell because of this port right here. This is the high side port and this is the low side port. So in here is an orifice tube. An orifice tube is a restriction because the compressor actually won't build pressure. The orifice tube builds pressure. So as it builds pressure, it keeps the the refrigerant liquid up to this point and as it goes through your evaporator it starts to cool down. Now I know I've kind of jumped around a little bit but this is this is like the important part of the whole system. Because if this is this orifice tube is damaged or something like that, it either will evaporate too soon, it won't function at all. Is this most blockages in systems happen right here. Um, so the coolant is a liquid, it's a superheated liquid. So we're talking like 140 degrees to 200 degrees to this orifice tube. Now the way that happens is because of it, because of the orifice tube. It builds pressure from this restriction, from the orifice tube restriction, the compressor builds a pressure. So even though it boils at 48, at 28 degrees, boil turns into, a, turns into a gas, the um, refrigerant is at a liquid at 140 degrees, 200 degrees, 300 degrees, depending on the, how hot it is outside. Um, it's still liquid in here. Now, how is that possible? Because of pressure. Because this little itty bitty piece right here, this orifice tube, which is just a restriction. Okay. It goes to the evaporator, comes to the compressor. Compressor pushes it through the dryer. Okay. So it comes out of the out of the evaporator through the dryer. The dryer is just that. It pulls moisture out of the system. There's there's a condes uh, a desiccant filter in there. So it's something you put in like. Uh, like you open up your beef jerky, it's got the little do not eat package in it. Something similar to that's in here. Uh, that goes, and then from here, it goes into the compressor because we don't want liquid going into the compressor. The importance of keeping your system correctly charged so that all the refrigerant is evaporated before it goes into the compressor. As it comes out of the compressor, because of the restriction of the orifice tube, it comes out and starts turning into a liquid. Now, as a liquid, as the pressure builds, it turns into a liquid as it comes into the condenser. The condenser, it goes through the lines of the condenser, cooling it off, try, uh, 
just kind of cooling the temperatures down, but it's still, it's still hot though. We're still talking like 140 degrees. So as it comes up from the compressor, it comes up through here to the orifice tube, high temperature. So this, this, this side will be super hot. This side will be cold. This is where it evaporates, right here. Comes up into the, uh, from the orifice tube, it expands. We're talking like pinhole size to the size of a pencil, so it's not that much space. It expands and starts turning into a gas and starts the system all over again. Uh, some ways to get, ways you get cold air coming out of your vents is because it has a blower motor or a fan. That's the pressure inlet right here, and it's got a fan on the back side of it. What that does is it pushes intake air across your evaporator and that's how it moves air throughout your vehicle it comes out your uh so you get cold air out your vents because it's pulling heat so that's how that system works uh, we can turn it on it's going to be loud but you can hear the compressor kick on so we've already got that and we're going to turn the whole system on so if you come over here we're just running the fan right now this is pushing just pushing air, it's all still. This obviously it's not working correctly, but it is pushing air out. So if you listen to the compressor, what's that's doing? It's engaging a clutch plate on the compressor. Oops, so now it's not moving. Maybe we can turn this temperature down and see if it'll turn on. Alright, so what this is doing is that whatever temperature you have set, it turns on and off to move this the refrigerant around in the system. Um, you may not turn back on because it's cold in here. But that's essentially how this system works. As the, comp as the compressor engages, it moves, it moves that refrigerant, presses it into the system. So, uh, it has to build that pressure for the whole thing to work. As it builds pressure, it shuts off. A certain pressure, um, allowing everything to kind of equalize out, and then it'll move back to the system. A basic overview of the AC system and all AC systems and vehicles are this way. This is from an Audi. It could be a big rig truck. It could be your 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 combine tractor. It can be anything. Um, all ACs are basically the same thing. All the same pieces: compressor, a dryer, or an accumulator, depending on. And here's here's an interesting tip: if you have a dryer, you have an orifice tube. If you have a, uh, a dryer, is on the um, on the return side, on the evaporator side of the system. If you have an accumulator, which is on the condenser side of the system, you have a TXV valve or an exchange valve. Um, so it's kind of interesting right there. So, um, if you have any questions, put them down below. Thanks.